will move on to member statement. Member statement. The member from Mississauga, Aaron Mills. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. This past few weeks have been a time of much celebrations in my riding of Mississauga, Aaron Mills. I was delighted to join my constituents on a number of occasions to observe Passover, Ramadan, Easter, Orthodox Easter, Vasaki, and Eid al Fitr celebrations. We have a diverse community in Mississauga with a variety of cultures and traditions. It is always a pleasure to join together for these wonderful occasions. Madam Speaker, something else to celebrate in is our government investment in homelessness prevention. The government has announced an additional $202 million annually beginning in 2023-2024 under the Homelessness Preven Prevention Program and the Indigenous Supportive Housing Program. On Friday, the MPPs of Peel Region announced that Peel will be receiving $42.3 million for this initiative. This money will help those affected by homelessness and support communities' partners delivering supportive housing. We know that this is a serious, there is a serious housing affordability crisis in Mississauga and throughout Ontario right now. This investment will help solve some of these problems but while we continue to work hard of tackling the housing crisis, these investments will have a tangible short-term impact, helping some of our neighbor neighborhood get back on their feet. Thank you. For that, we have a reason to celebrate. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Member statement, the member from Timiskim and Cochrane. Thank you, Speaker. Inglehart is a small town. It's my hometown, actually, in the district of Timiskim and Cochrane. It's on Highway 11. The Associate Minister of Transportation knows exactly where it is because he was there for an announcement a couple weeks ago. On April 11th, on a beautiful, clear day, on a straight stretch of highway, there was a head-on collision between two transport trucks. Our thoughts go out with the families, but it was obvious two transport trucks, no one else involved. On April 18th, a tractor trailer in Englehart forced a school bus with students on it off the road into the ditch. The school bus had the right of way. The tractor trailer driver fled the scene. On April 22nd, just south of Englehart, on the Earlton overpass, a tractor trailer driver passed another tractor trailer on the overpass, and the person coming with their dash cam was forced off the road. That's three tractor trailer, one tragic accident, two near misses in 11 days, just outside one little town. And that's happening all over on 11 and 17. The government needs to step in with proper, make sure the, all drivers are properly trained, properly licensed, and that the laws are enforced now. Thank you. Thank you. Member statement, the member from Simcoe Gray. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Speaker, my riding of Simcoe Gray has a very diverse and dynamic economy and is home to many businesses that have made their mark on the national and international stage. Companies such as Honda, Agnora, Reinhardt Foods, McLean Engineering, Blue Mountain Resort, Meditech, and Decast, just to name a few. Today, I would like to highlight two impressive companies in Simcoe Gray that are using innovation, science, and technology to the benefit of the people of Ontario. The first company is Baxter Canada in Alliston whose mission is to save and sustain lives. Operating since 1957, Baxter produces life-saving intravenous and dialysis solutions found throughout our hospitals and clinics in Ontario and around the world. Operating out of a state-of-the-art 180,000 square foot manufacturing facility, Baxter Canada employs 430 people. The second company I would like to highlight is Impossible Metals from Collingwood, Ontario. And this is an exciting new startup company that is led by Duntru native Jason Gillum and his team of talented scientists and engineers. Impossible Metals builds underwater robotic vehicles to collect much needed rare earth EV battery materials from the seabed without harming the environment. The metals they harvest are from the depths of in excess of 5,000 meters are essential to help accelerate and enable Ontario's and the world's transition to more sustainable energy. 
Speaker, these are just two examples of companies that are working in uh, Simcoe Gray to move us forward in a sustainable way. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Thunder Bay Superior North. Thank you, Speaker. This Friday is the day of mourning for workers who have lost their lives through workplace accidents and workplace exposure to deadly chemicals. Unfortunately, this government, by distorting the function of the WSIB, has shown that it is not there for workers. Claim suppression, refusing doctors' assessments, bribery to deny that accidents have taken place, illegal cuts to the cost of living allowance, cutting support payments on the basis of fictitious jobs, and the return of billions of dollars to business that should have been available to support the far too many workers forced to live on ODSP because WSIB has denied their claims. Recently, this government failed to reduce allowable levels of diesel exposure to what scientists have long recommended. Parents, beware. Young people are vulnerable to permanent brain damage due to currently allowed rates of diesel exposure, and once harmed, they will have to fight tooth and nail for compensation. It doesn't have to be this way. This Friday, attend a day of mourning ceremony in your community, pay tribute to those who have died because of their jobs, and demand that the Ford government put the health and well-being of workers first. Nothing less is acceptable. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Oakville North, Burlington. Thank you, Speaker. Each of us in this House and at every level of government must work to better protect women and girls escaping abusive relationships of intimate partner violence and coercive control. This is why I was so pleased that last fall, this House unanimously passed my motion for Ontario to consult about passing Kira's law in our province. This would require continuing education seminars for judges and other legal professionals in our family courts so that they have the knowledge they need about IPV and coercive control. Last week, our federal counterparts moved forward as the Senate passed Kira's law for federal judges. However, for women in Ontario, this is not enough. We need to act in Ontario as well as family courts reside in our hands provincially, not federally. Intimate partner violence and coercive control are insidious forms of abuse that have devastating effects on victims and their families. From November 26, 2021 to November 25, 2022, 52 women in Ontario died as a result of femicide. We must do everything in our power to end this kind of violence and ensure that those who perpetrate it are held accountable by law. Together, we can make a real difference in the lives of women and girls in Ontario. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Sudbury. Thank you very much, Speaker. This Friday, April 28th, is the International Day of Mourning. It's a point of pride for my community, Speaker, because the Day of Mourning was started in Sudbury in 1983. It was still workers and CUPE members who noticed that there was a procession for, for a firefighter who had died and wanted that recognition for every worker, for every job who has been killed, injured, or, or suffered from occupational disease. They chose April 28th because that was the day in 1914 that Workers' Compensation Act received third reading. And good ideas can't be contained, Speaker. 1983 in Sudbury, 1984 the Canadian Labour Congress, 1989 the AFL-CIO, and in 1991 Canada recognized the International Day of Mourning for the first time. A great idea that started in Sudbury, Speaker. The Day of Mourning, a Workers' Memorial Day, is now celebrated in more than 100 countries around the world. We simply stopped counting after 100. You recognize the Day of Mourning, Speaker, by wearing armbands or, or pins with a carry in the coal mine or holding flags at half mast. But most people remember the Day of Mourning, Speaker, because of the moment of silence. The moment of silence is reflective of the slogan of the Day of Mourning of remember the dead and fight for the living. I challenge all members of the House, Speaker, when the moment of silence is finished, to never be silent again when it comes to health and safety for workers in the workplace. Thank you, Speaker.
Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Whitby. Uh, speaker, I'm pleased to share that uh, 10 organizations within the region of Durham recently received approximately $908,000 from the Resilient Communities Fund through the Ontario Trillium Foundation. In Whitby, the Charles H. Best Diabetes Centre received a substantive grant to help them continue to deliver their outstanding programs and services to hardworking families across the region and outlying areas. Nearby in Oshawa, Catholic Family Services of Durham received $141,000 to continue to provide help, hope, and healing to individuals, couples, and families. Speaker, the Ontario Trillium Foundation has invested $200 million through the Resilient Communities Fund to support the delivery of community-based initiatives throughout the region of Durham. What's clear, Speaker, is that countless residents within the town of Whitby and other parts of the region of Durham rely on their services and programs every day. Our government, Speaker, is lifting Durham residents up, providing them with a hand up through these investments while building healthy and vibrant communities. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Brampton East. Thank you, Speaker. This month has been one of celebration, remembrance, and prayer in my riding of Brampton East and for Ontarians across the province. Over the last 30 days, members of the Hindu community celebrated Hanuman Jayanti to commemorate the birth of the Hindu deity Hanuman. The Christian community celebrated Easter to commemorate the resurrection of Jesus Christ through prayer and gatherings with their loved ones. The Jewish community observed Passover in remembrance and recognition of the community's strength, bravery, and resilience. The Tamil communities celebrated Patandu the Harvest Festival, which marks the beginning of the new year as per the Tamil and Thai calendars, the Sikh community celebrating Vaisakhi, marking the beginning of the harvest season in Punjab and the day the Order of the Khalsa was created, and members of the Muslim community just celebrated Eid al-Fitr to mark the end of the holy month of Ramadan. Speaker, Ontario is home to many individuals from diverse and ethnic and cultural backgrounds, and I'm proud to celebrate our province's multiculturalism and diversity. We're lucky to live in such a cultural mosaic that brings people together in such a joyful and united manner. I look forward to continuing to celebrate and honour the diversity of our province and cultural, as cultural events take place throughout the coming months and year. Thank you, Speaker. The member for Haldeman, Norfolk. Thank you, Speaker. Last week was National Volunteer Appreciation Week. Volunteers are the most re important resource this province has, and our communities would grind to a halt without them. I want to give a huge shout out to the Hagersville Lions Club, who recently wrapped up a fundraiser called Chase the Ace. Chase the Ace is a progressive raffle in which participants purchase a ticket for a chance to win in the weekly jackpot, but also a progressive jackpot. Every Thursday, people lined up at the Hagersville Legion to purchase tickets. Each week, the number of tickets sold grew along with the jackpot. Speaker, 45 weeks of Catch the Ace in Hagersville, 45 weeks of a few dozen Lions Club members along with the Legion, members of the Chamber of Commerce and Hagersville Rocks gave of their time not only on Thursdays but for preparation ahead of time as well. Jackpot hopefuls came from as far as the United States, Nova Scotia, Alberta, and British Columbia. In week 45, an astounding 152,000 tickets were sold. In the end, it was 83-year-old Richard Marshall who caught the ace, a commercial fisherman his whole life who reeled in over $2 million. The West Haldimand Hospital and Healthcare Foundation gets an infusion of $1.4 million, the local food bank about $1 million, and the Lions will retain about $550,000. Lion Dan Matten said the 45 weeks was simply extraordinary and an entire community effort. For those missing the excitement of Catch the Ice, no worries. The Community Support Centre of Haldeman Norfolk has already started a new round each Thursday at the Caledonia Legion. Best of luck to all. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Perth Wellington. Thank you, Speaker. It's my pleasure to rise today to highlight some important health care investments our government is making in my riding of Perth Wellington. Recently, I announced on behalf of Minister Jones that our government is supporting our doctors working after hours in our hospitals through the Hospital On Call Coverage Program. 
Stratford General Hospital will, re will be receiving more than $2.3 million. Groves Memorial Hospital will be receiving more than $1.2 million under the program. In December, I was pleased to announce the Palmerston and District Hospital was approved for a new MRI operating funding, which totals over $1 million. Speaker. Many of my rural communities currently travel to large urban centres for critical MRI services. This funding will ensure my constituents can access care closer to home in a more timely fashion. There's more, Speaker. The Minister of Health has provided Perth County paramedic services with over 187,000 to help provide wraparound supports through its mobile integrated health team. This funding is ensuring people in my riding getting the right care in the right place. There's still more, Speaker. Last spring, our government launched the Learn and Stay program. As members will know, this program covers the cost of tuition, books, and other educational expenses for nurses in exchange for them practicing in rural and northern communities. Speaker, I'm pleased to share this program has helped the Huron Perth Healthcare Alliance recruit and retain 16 new nurses. Speaker. Hey. Speaker, this is great news. There's more work to be done, but I am proud to be part of a government that is building a strong rural health care system. Thank you very much. That concludes our members' statements for this morning.